Greetings! In today's video, I want to compare three paints that feature the cochineal red pigment. You might not be familiar with this pigment, but the name cochineal refers to a small bug from which the pigment is made. So yeah, this color is made from bug. We've had colors made from rocks, colors made from plants, colors made in a lab, and this one is quite different from these other colors. It's what I would consider sort of a legacy or vintage color in the sense that they don't really make it anymore and there are so many alternatives to red pigments now that there's really no need to have this specific color made, but you can still find it I have it from three brands here. I have the Lutea Carmin Lac de Cochenille, which is their cochineal paint. I have Schmincke's Cochineal Red, which is a recent special edition paint that they released. And I also have a pan of Cochineal Carmine in this set from Texas Wild Color. I'll prepare a swatching sheet, I will swatch these, and we will be able to talk about the various hues and the character of each paint. So the first tube I'm looking at here is the Cochineal Red from Schminke. They did something special with the packaging to make it look more vintage. On the tube itself, it, it kind of looks like it's pixelated a bit. The box is really interesting and pretty. I think I might keep that just for the novelty of it. It was really easy to use straight from the tube, of course, and it mixed really well with water on my brush. It was super easy to put down. We have a bright color right away. It doesn't spread all that much, but it spreads just a tiny bit. You can see how nice and smooth it is in my porcelain palette. The next one is the Lutea tube of paint. I've had this one for a little while. There is not any kind of pigment number or info on it, but as it's made from cochineal beetles, it's kind of a different situation here. The paint was really easy to work, and it makes for a more purpley, more muted color. As I'm painting it, you can see that it's not as strong a pigment as the Schminke one. Also, I didn't pour enough from the tube at first, so I had to add some more and work a bit more intensity in my swatch just so I can see how deep we can go with this particular paint. And the third color is the Texas Wildcolor one. Now I had pre-wet my pan a good while before I needed to paint it and I knew I had to soften the paint and then really take the time to mix it well on my brush in the palette as you can see and doing so makes for a really beautiful color it's similar in hue to the Lutea one, but it has more vibrancy to it. One of the advantages of working from a pan is that you can really easily go pick up more paint if you need more. I mean, it's not that hard to squeeze more paint from a tube, but pans are very convenient. Here we have the painted swatches. As you can see, this is the Schminke one, this is the Lutea one, and this is the Texas Wild Color one. At first glance, the main thing that pops up is just how different the Schminke one is. These are fairly similar in hue, but this one is drastically different. It's also very different in terms of texture. As you can see, this one is relatively smooth, while these two have some texture to them. There's something that I wanted to try out, and it's the rub-off test. If you don't know what the rub-off test is, it's simply that you take a tissue and you rub it gently over dry paint and you look if it picked up any of the pigment. If it did, it often means that the balance of binder and pigment is not quite there yet, but there are exceptions. Some pigments are particularly difficult to balance right, and that can happen even with professional paint. So I wanted to try these just out of curiosity. Start with the Schminke one. So you can see, brand new tissue, clean. It did pick up a bit of color, that's surprising. Okay, so a little bit of rub off with the Schminke one. I'll flip over my tissue, take a completely different corner, completely white. A very faint trace of pigment from the Lutea one. I would say that the main difference is that 
this one was perhaps just a tiny bit rougher. It's not very noticeable, but it seems to have like damaged the tissue a bit more. And the last one, I'll use this area here that is white. And nothing. So our winner in terms of balance pigment binder is the Texas Wild Color one. The one that is for me the most surprising is the Schmincke one because you would think that for a business of that size they would have the resources to make sure that doesn't really happen. It's not a really big deal but it's a bit surprising. Another thing I wanted to try with these is to see just how rewettable they are. Now I know from the Texas Wildcolor one, since it's already a dry pan, the way to get the best result for this one is to add water to it, let it sit for a good, min a good few minutes, like a good while, and then when you prepare the paint to put on the paper, you make sure you mix it well on your brush. And that gave me the best application of this particular paint here with the, the really pretty texture. Like, it's not grainy. It's really just the way the paint flocculates that looks like that. I've also had experience with Lutea in dry form. It doesn't fare very well in dry form. I When I first got the Lutea colors, I put them in a plastic palette and there was really nothing to be done to re-wet them. So now I try to keep them in the tube. The first experiment I did with these is to put them in the lid of a metal palette and to put some plastic wrap on top. And I've had some good results with indigo this way, but I haven't tried really. This is supposed to be my carmin here. It might be a tiny bit contaminated with the violet next to it, but I might try that to see if it rewets. I also have it in a ceramic dish, the one I used to paint the swatch, but it's it's not like a substantial amount, but I can try to rewet that see how it looks. And the one I absolutely haven't tried in terms of rewettability is the Schmincke one that I've put in this dish. So I will try at least the Lutea because I'm curious to see how my experiment with the plastic wrap worked out or not. And also the Schmincke. This is a piece of Arche paper. I'm using a synthetic brush to work the paints. So it's this one in the corner here. So it seems to work. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why this specific setup works, where it really did not work when I tried a plastic palette for these. Now, the little ceramic dish. I know it's not a very significant amount of paint, so perhaps not the best test of rewettability. There's not enough paint in there left to get a very strong swatch, but I think it did rewet like significantly well. I don't see any issue with that. Seems fine. And now the real unknown. Oh, it seems to rewet really easily. Absolutely not a problem here. I was a bit curious about the color, so I picked up my two books about pigments that I have, mainly this one, The Secret Lives of Color and Artists Little Book of Color. I wanted to know if they had anything special to say about cochineal. In this one, the, um, the artist's little book of color, they don't talk much about it. There's a, a tiny bit of a paragraph here that's about the cochineal beetle. And the most important info in this one is where it says that it produces a transparent and highly fugitive color when ground and precipitated on clay. There's a bit of historical context. But yeah, the only sort of relevant info for us as painters is that it's transparent and very fugitive. In this one, there's a bit more about the color. So if you go to this page, you have about three pages of info about this color. It's a lot of historical context and info about the bug and the color and where it came from and all of that. In terms of relevant information for us as painters, well, there really isn't that much about paint and this particular pigment. They talk a lot about using it in 
dyes for clothing and the history of the color and how it was used, where it was used, but not any particular info about paint. So while this is interesting, it's not particularly relevant to us as painters. So final thoughts on this color. On its own, I think it's a beautiful color. It's like a, a slightly muted magenta in a way. I can see how this would be useful in a palette and I can see how it was useful in a palette when no other magenta color was available. Its main issue is the fact that it's absolutely not light fast. So you can use it in sketchbooks and whatever, and you can use it on paintings if you want, but like so many historical pigments derived from plants and bugs, it wouldn't last the test of time. Now, this color, compared to the other colors, the very obvious question is why is it so different? And I don't really have the answer to that at the moment. This is something that I would need to research a bit more. There's really no info, there's nothing to indicate that this could be a mix of multiple pigments, including cochineal. I'm mentioning that because we've all sort of been through this already with Daniel Smith. Okay, all it says on here is NR4 colon 1, so natural red for colon 1. The simplest explanation would be that, you know, with every kind of naturally sourced pigment, there can be variations depending on how, what, when, where, how much, and all of that. So that would be my theory. Now, is it the best of the cochineal color? That's not really a question that can be asked, because they're all so different. If they were all of a very similar hue and texture, I would perhaps have an opinion on that, but they're so different. This one is definitely more magenta and more even. The Lutea one has kind of a darker texture going on. It reminds me a bit of those, you know, granulating formulas where they have two pigments, one that is granulating, one that is not, and it makes for this dual effect. And then the Texas Wildcolor one is quite even in hue, but has beautiful texture. And none of these is the same you as the other. So really, I would guess that you could pick any of these depending on which one you prefer. This one is a limited edition item from Schmincke. It is part of a product release from Schmincke that we had recently where they based the design of the palettes themselves on a vintage pamphlet or ad they found in their archives or whatnot. And this color is sort of the only special color of this release. I was reading what's written on the side of the box. I don't know if you can see. It says, the special color cochineal red preserves all original features and is a unique historical treasure. It's a bit vague and kind of leaves a bit of room for interpretation, but still, the tube doesn't account for any other pigment, so. The Lutea color is available readily. It's not that hard to find. And as for Texas Wall Color, since this is artisan made paints, it's a bit more difficult to have a clear schedule of what is available when, but it is indeed a beautiful color and I think it's my favorite of the three. I think personally my least favorite is the Schmincke one, not because it's not pretty, just because it's not really that special. Kind of reminds me of PV19, which is a very common color and a very common pigment. These two feel more unique and really particular. So what do you guys think? Have you tried any of these? Have you any interest in these? What are your thoughts? How do you feel about making color from smushed up little bugs? <laughs> Please let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate your thoughts and opinions. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We will see each other in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you.